So let me start with the multiple choice. So, um, yeah, <laughs> this is actually, I think this is my first time going through this. So I hope there aren't too many uh, programmed mistakes. So uh, like with the other two multiple choice questions I have done, I am going to be using perplexity. And I really want to make this absolutely clear that you are not allowed to use perplexity or any other generative AI or for that matter, any outside help while you are doing this assessment. Using it, any outside help is academic dishonesty. There can be consequences for that. Please don't. Uh, I'm doing this right now, not as a demonstration of something you should be doing, but as a way to see what the cutting edge is, what the uh, cutting edge of um, <laughs> learning tool is. And actually, you can use perplexity in a way that helps your learning. So the way I imagine someone could use it is, let's say you went through this uh, multiple choice time assessment once, and you got some questions right, some questions wrong. And when you look at your result, it won't tell you which questions you got right or wrong. And uh, now you're trying to figure out which questions you missed so that you can study and prepare as you are doing your next try. That's what you're doing. In that stage, you, are, you can use whatever you, you, tool you want to use. At that time, after you are done with the assessment and you're just studying, you're not prohibited from using outside help. As long as that outside help is a basis of something you turn in, because whatever you turn in has to be your own work. So with that, I'm all set up. Let me start and we'll just uh, work through. Um, we, in my other attempts, I've been running out of time, so I'll try to go through this quickly. Because um, sometimes the questions get so complicated that uh, you do um, take uh, GPT takes a lot of time just to explaining stuff when when I'm cheating like this I want you to just give me the answer um, so anyways. yeah I'm gonna have to type in some stuff with there Let's see why is a okay and uh, while I'm doing this, I'm kind of turning off my physics brain and not even reading the responses. So that is what I'm going to do. Uh, okay, i got a particle of charge uh, Q and mass M moving in a region filled with the initial velocity back V is equal to V not back uh, hat Y. Um, GPT, I think, uh, understands the ask method notation a little bit. Equal to B not at X. So that's the uh, notation I'm, convention that I'm using. Um, yeah, that's the back E should point to okay, uh, A. Back E should point in plus head Y direction. Back E should point in minus at t direction say that e should point in um plus head t direction um d direction of that e depends on the china charge q okay all right that's put, took a lot of time i hope there are many questions like that because uh, uh skip and uh, kind of short on time Option B, okay. Um, we'll see. Again, I've turned off my physics brain. I wasn't even thinking about the setup. I have no idea if the answer it gave is correct or not. Uh, I'll look at it again. Um, somehow, if I finish doing this uh, uh, within the time limit, then I can kind of check um, before time limit runs out. If uh, um, in the likely scenario I, it, that doesn't happen, we can look at the submitted work, and I'll work through uh uh, work through which ones uh, GPT got right, which ones it got wrong, and kind of so that you end up with uh, knowing the final correct answers uh, for these questions. Okay. All right, I think I'm caught up in terms of time. Uh, yeah, in terms of time a little bit. So it's uh, usually the questions with a lot of math expressions that will slow me down. So. Uh, it's, Explaining the whole thing. Right. Difference A, B. So, what? Uh, it didn't. 
Okay, it didn't uh, actually answer. Difference between... Uh, yeah, this event is correct. Okay, this okay B is correct. Oh wow, uh, I guess uh, you know that actually could be something I would like as an instructor because uh, you know it's like uh, uh, you know from the perspective of an instructor, a good tutor is someone who actually doesn't give you answers right away because uh, I want someone who's helping you learn. You know, make sure you actually learn, not just give you answers. We are maturing, so. Uh, so you know um, the the what ChatGPT was doing. Other than that, you aren't supposed to use it at all. But you know, <laughs> GPT doesn't know if you are using it dishonestly or not. But in the under the assumption that you are using it honestly, I do like that and answers embedded into the response rather than just telling you oh, answers B uh, move on. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see whether it's actually right or not. So. Mm -hmm. Most correctly is A, okay. Um, again, I have no idea if that's correct or not. I wasn't actually reading the question, I was busy copying. Um, A, B, one over R, C, one over R, B. Oops, I copied it wrong. Uh, this is R and one over R here, okay. I might have time left. We'll see. And I guess that this question set doesn't have a lot of mathematical expressions. Uh, most correctly is A. Okay. Uh, that sounds like that could be right. But again, I wasn't actually thinking about the question, so I'm not 100% sure. Oh, wow, this is long. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think I mentioned the, my one of the kind of... Um, thing I do that I'm trying to fix, but I can always fix is I tend to write long questions. And especially when you have only one minute per question, that can be overly long. Um, I swear I'm not doing that intentionally. I'm trying to write shorter, easier to understand questions. This just came out long. Was correctly is B. Being able to set up, okay. Uh, this I think I can answer. So in this version, you should be solenoid. But I think there's a version of this question that uh, talks about Hamilton coil also. Um, oh, yeah, that one's gonna take a while. Okay. But I think I have enough time, maybe three minutes. So I think we'll be fine. Yeah, be fine. Um, was, uh, it's a solenoid B, yeah, correct. Um, right, let me paste in nine. Yeah, consider magnetic field, illustration, okay, loop is R and the current is I. And what is the, okay. um, B is equal to 2KEI over C squared R. Um, <laughs> This particular way of expression, uh, it might be difficult for people in other physics 4B classes because uh, it's actually quite unusual for um, uh, us to be using uh, Coulomb's constant and speed of light at this point in the semester. Um, but in your case, I've made sure to include in every lecture material those set of constants. So my assumption is that you are not confused by these uses of Coulomb constant and other um, uh, constants that are not commonly used when you are dealing with the magnetism. In any case, I think uh, no. Some of the factors actually matter. So, uh, okay. Pi over c squared r plus x direction. And I don't know if this is something I can um, actually. I, so if I um, see this kind of question while I'm working through this uh, on my own, I'm going to make a use of the fact that it's an open book uh, test. It's an open book assessment, so I'm going to look up the textbook. For the formula for the magnetic field due to a coil, it's, it's possible I can't, um, yeah, I think there's enough variety that I actually need to know the magnitude as well. So correct answer. Really? It's not? Okay, I wasn't really thinking through, but... Um, 
all right we'll see uh i gotta finish this up within the time limit uh, make sure i expand out the figure description it's talking about how i have enough time but i think i only have one minute left so let me just do this quickly given by b is equal to new not i over 2 pi r where r is the distance of and i is the I think this is the special figure shows okay which okay statement neither but with distance r away b c e yeah. Let me put this in and see how much time I have left. Probably less than a minute. Um, yeah, 15 seconds. But I think enough to type in the answer it gives me. Skip. Come on, come on, come on, get to the answer. <laughs> I don't know why. What? The correct answer is not given. Uh, all right, I'll guess C. Always guess C. <laughs> uh, by the way, um, my open method does a pretty good job of randomizing things, so always guessing C won't work. Uh, or you know, it won't work any better than always guessing B, always guessing the last choice, whatever. Um, sometimes the last choice actually will have lower probability of being right, because uh, there are certain kind of uh, predictably wrong answers that I put it as last and disable shuffling for the last. Uh, statistical terms last one is um, hey 70 percent that's a decent um this is one of the reasons i can't rely on uh, multiple choice scores anymore because someone cheating like i was right now uh, can get 70 percent so let's uh, just go through the answers to see um uh, which uh, uh, ones um um, uh, to see uh, which ones he got right, which ones he got wrong. So I'm trying to get uh, seventy uh, percent that's correct. So I'm gonna keep a tally of the correct answers and incorrect answers, and uh, we should end up with a tally of seven and three. So starting from top. Uh, navigator since okay let I'm gonna always uh, start by looking at the choice that ChatGPT picked and then um, if that's correct then you know move on from there <laughs> so okay uh, yeah, North South Pole which explains okay North Pole is attracted to the South the magnetic pole of Earth which is North yeah we think that's correct enough so uh, got that one correct Okay, consider a particle charge QMS um, uniform. Yeah. Okay, so it's a particle Q. I'm gonna assume Q is positive, so V cross B uh, should give you uh, downward. Yeah, B is pointing out of the screen. Yeah. So downward force. What direction should the electric field? Ah, so the electric field should be set up upward to oppose that, uh, like a motional EMF from the magnetic field. The point in uh, that's wrong. It should have been plus the g direction. So it got one wrong. Um, yeah, and uh, the, it, this is a matter of it doing uh, a cross product with the right hand rule, and then realizing the direction of electric field should be opposed to the force uh, opposed to the direction of v cross b. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know why ChatGPT would say. Well, yeah, it knows the drawing to force. Um, yeah, so when it says this, uh, it's because it doesn't know. It can't do geometric reasoning. Okay, interaction between an electric charge and my, like only feels a force when it is moving. Yeah, because the V is one of the factors in determining the force. So that feels right. Um, okay, in what way are magnetic poles very different from magnetic electric? Oh, and they gave this as the yeah, I remember. 
I'm going to have North and South Poles, electrons will have, yeah, yeah, that's very different. No magnetic monopoles. Uh, it's uh, um, odd, odd, odd. Um, so there isn't any like a fundamental physics reason magnetic monopoles should exi shouldn't exist. It's just that as an experimental fact, they don't exist. And in fact, one of the, some of the uh, investigations of physics beyond the standard model, the current best knowledge of physics involves uh, 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 positing that there's a magnetic monopole. And um, it, it's an interesting topic. I think I link you to that. So you are welcome to read about it yourself. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. Um, typical current is made the flow from left to right. Okay. Um, in the rather, yeah, that's the description. What would be measured? Uh, so zero volt is bottom, okay. Um, so, yeah, can I think this through? Um, so, um, metal, electrons are charged carriers. So for the electrons, uh, let me just uh, read what the negative is. Uh, I, I gotta actually work it through to see. So, um, electrons being negative charges means I have negative charges that are actually moving this way. So, uh, V uh, cross B is pointed upward. So, the electrons actually feel a force downward. Because um, uh, the V is this way. So, the V cross B, let me do it from my perspective, is upward. This is V cross B, which means when you multiply charge, uh, it's pointed downward. That's the magnetic force. So that magnetic force makes these negative charges accumulate down here, which means on the top, we should have lack of negative charges or positive charges. So with this charge arrangement, I can figure out the direction of electric field. Electric field will point this way. Um, so those electric field uh, means the uh, if uh, this is a zero volt, then I think whatever voltage this is should be positive. Let me think of this. Through. Yeah, it should be positive. Good. So we should say uh, positive voltage because electrons are negative. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I meant to erase this, but not my tally. Uh, major voltage will be positive because electron charge is negative. Yeah, so it should have been um, two, not uh, B, not uh, not A. So incorrect, unless I made a mistake. Hall <laughs> um, effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you have to figure out on which side. Uh, Forcing return to my right hand rule. Yeah, for. Okay. Uh, but, okay, it never actually worked out the direction of the force on the electron. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think it makes sense to me that you got that question wrong. Okay, uh, choose the statement below which um, most correctly describes the magnetic field of current carrying infinitely long solenoid. I feel this uniform inside. Yeah, I think I saw this uh, while we were doing it and we thought, oh, yeah, that sounds correct. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Gauss's law and appear how a field is related to source of field. Gauss's law describes, okay, the difference in the application. Uh, let me look at this one first. Gaussian surface, you choose a surface to be perpendicular to electric field at the local. Okay, yeah, yeah. In Ampereian law, you choose the loop segment to be parallel to. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Um, so that feels correct to me, so I'll say that's correct. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I got my long question right. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, this one I know we got it right. And if you get the other version, there might be Hamilton coil. Um, and it, you, you won't have both at the same time. Hamilton coach and solenoid at the same time. That would be too tricky. So, um, all right. Uh, so I have six and two, eight. Yeah, okay, two more. Um, so it, it 
그러니까 it gets the one of the next to right and one of the next to wrong. Uh, consider the magnetic field. Uh, yeah. So this is the kind of one where, uh, well, none of the above. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. But for me to get the correct answer, I actually need the textbook because um, so I could redrive the formula for the magnetic field due to a loop. But um, I think that's going to take too long. It's certainly not what you expect you to be able to do during the time assessment. So I, my intention for this question especially is that you should look up the textbook for the formula for that specific scenario. So under source of the magnetic field, there's magnetic field over current loop. So you should be able to look it up. You should be able to say uh, magnetic field over current loop is that. Now, your problem will be that um, that is not any of the choices because <laughs> we are using different coefficients. Um, the thing that you have to remember is, I think I can remember this, mu naught is equal to 4 pi times Coulomb constant divided by c squared. And the way I would validate this um, memory, my thing, is to remember Ke is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So this is equal to uh, 1 over epsilon naught c squared. So solving for c squared, you get 1 over epsilon naught mu naught. And I actually have this memorized. Um, but for you, this is what you need to know. Um, probably should be in your notes because <laughs> I use it enough. <laughs> you might see it on uh, timed assessment questions. So using this, plug it in. Then when I work through this, now what I have is plugged in, 2 cancels out to uh, 4, so 2 pi. Ke over R times I. That should be the expression for the magnetic field. Um, so 2 pi Ke over I. Oh wait, I, did I forget C squared? Uh, 2 pi Ke over C squared R. Um, so pointing to, oh, I have to figure out the direction. So the way the figures are drawn, it looks to me like uh, and I think it describes at the bottom current points out, at the top current points in. So at the bottom current points out, at the top points in. So the magnetic field in within the loop with a point to the left. So minus x direction. Uh, so this minus x, I think this b. That's the correct answer. Um, so the other one, uh, so GPT actually really only got 60% because the next question is said that there is no answer. Um, and uh, so here the correct answer is again B. Uh, that gives you the get you the correct magnitude and correct direction through application of the uh, through application of the right hand rule. Yeah, pointing field of pointing to the left within the loop. Yeah. So. So wait, wait, why did I mark it correct? Um, so GPT its answer was incorrect. So let me. Mark this as incorrect. And the next one technically got it correct, but if I just following ChatGPT, I wouldn't have gotten it correct because it said, um, it said this. It said correct answer is not given. <laughs> so let's figure out why the thing I picked to see, just randomly guessing, the direction of the magnetic field continues to point in the same direction. Why that's correct? All that are reduced magnetic field. Okay. So we are looking at it here. Um, we are saying we had this, and then we bent this away. One of the things to figure out is, OK, uh, what's the contribution to the magnetic field from each of the segments? From each of the segments, I can figure this out. So in this segment, um, using the right-hand rule, it points out here, goes around, points in here. And that's going to be the same kind of arrangement here. As my current is going up, it induces uh, fields that look like Coming, um, coming out of the screen here, you know, on the left hand side coming out of the screen, and then on the right side come going into the screen. So, so kind of like that. And at the top, um, as the current flows to the left, at the top it's uh, coming into the screen or going into the screen, and at the bottom it's uh, coming out of the screen, something like that. Um, so. I guess these two contributions will kind of cancel out within. Is that right? That didn't feel right. Um, so, oh wait, I drew it wrong. So at the top, it's coming. 
going into the screen at the bottom, it's coming out of the screen. Okay. At the top, going into the screen, bottom. So yeah, so these all add together. So at in within here, it's coming out of the screen. Now, none of this affects anything here, actually. This is what we are looking at. And what I can reason is, based on this segment being so much closer, I would guess this will just control what the direction of the magnetic field here is. And the contributions from the others, even if they are in opposite direction, they will kind of tend to be smaller and not be as significant. So it should be... Um, so it should be direction of the magnetic field, which was pointing into the page. Was it pointing into the page? Oh yeah, pointing into the page at P. So, you know, going up. So on the right side, uh, pointing, sorry, on the left side, pointing into the page. Yeah, yeah. that uh, continues to follow, yeah, in the same direction. Good, um, so that's the last uh, of the questions and um, ChatGPT, Perplex, they got it right only because I had the sense to guess C. Now, does that mean you should always guess a C? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, you know, but uh, rather than leaving the answer blank, I would uh, recommend guessing because blank answer is definitely wrong, whereas a guessed answer might be graded as correct. So, 